Um, what I wanted to talk about is Jesus calls us. And uh, there's, a, of course, the initial calling that he does uh, to us, but that it's a continual thing that he, yeah. he keeps us um, to himself, calling us to himself in purity and holiness. <clears throat> and I want you to notice the provisions that God has made so that we would come to him. I want, it to, I want you to read along with me in Acts 17. You can turn to it if you want, or let us read it to you here in a minute. But that this uh, passage, the first time I realized what it was saying, it was just a real... Um, eye-opener to me. It was, it was just real encouraging, real um, heartfelt to know that this is, this is how God planned this all along, you know. So we'll read this part here. 17 uh, verses 24 through 28. <clears throat> the God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined, and this is the part, their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist. So this part here is what, what really, and you know, just was endearing to me to think about that God planned it this way. He didn't just allow all of us just to come into the world at any time, any place, anywhere, but he had planned for each one of us to be at a specific time, uh, in a specific family even, at, you know, it's appointed, these things were appointed. <clears throat> so that, and the reason behind it, so that we would seek him. And so this was his purpose in doing that. First Timothy uh, 2, 4 says, Who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And First Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Mm -hmm. So this is what he desires. Uh, I'm in God, and know, knowing everything, he knows that all won't, of course, but this, this would be his desire. <clears throat> of course, he also gives us his word that he reveals to himself to us so he doesn't keep us in the dark about a lot of things but he you know he tells us so many things as his children he reveals these things to us he has protected this word and not allowed anyone to destroy it so that we would have this on the, down through the ages another way that he draws us to uh, to himself is through the trials and hardships of this life this life is not to be a smooth sailing with no problems kind of life. There, there's reason for this. This was planned. <laughs> and uh, this is all in the plan to bring us to himself and also to point us to a better place mm -hmm. rather than this world in its temporariness. <clears throat> Amen. James says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So someone has to get to the point to, to recognize that this is the way God planned it. This is a blessing from the yeah. Lord. And uh, let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So see there again, there's the end result. That's the purpose to bring us to that point for these things. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. So this is the intent of the Lord all along, uh, to bring us all the way to himself. And it's through rough rough roads part of the time, not just smooth sailing, because then we would tend to forget him. We wouldn't need him, you know, and it would be so comfortable here that we wouldn't look forward to the next life. So life on earth is not to be uh, taken this way that we think something's wrong if, if things aren't going well and smooth for us. But instead, we, we could recognize that this is what God does for his children, and uh, this is a confirmation to us. Uh, Brother Aaron was talking about this in his lesson this morning. These are confirmations that this is, this is how he has planned it, and we're in this plan, see, that these things happen in this way. And this is how he continues to, to draw us and call out to us so that the world doesn't take us away, and that, so we won't be caught up in the things of the world. Our lives are but a vapor in view of eternity and span. And we have to think of it in this way. And all these things he's revealed to us, see, in his word, we're not left in the dark to figure this out. But he's very clear in, in many of these things so that we know this. And I just uh, praise him for how he has revealed all this to us, how we can see that, um, that this is his plan, that it was planned a long time ago, and that he uh, worked this all out. Only he, he could do this in his great wisdom and his mercy. I want to uh, wrap it all up in this verse, I mean, I mean, these verses of a song that you all are very familiar with, Jesus Calls Us, and I want to read those. You can 
um, think along these lines. Jesus calls us, or the tumult, of our life's wild, restless sea. It can be that way. Day by day, his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Mm -hmm. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store, from each idol that would keep us, saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by thy mercies. Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our, heart, our hearts to thy obedience. Serve and love thee best of all. Yes. Amen. Amen.